47 years in this building. But the Warriors had an open practice with about 14,000 people here yesterday. Steve Kerr is going to rest some of the key players today because they'll play the Lakers twice this week in wrapping up the preseason. Our Southwest Airlines starting lineups are a little bit different because you have Steph Curry, Daniel House Jr., Kevin Durant, Kevon Looney, and Damian Jones. Shaquille Harrison, Josh Jackson, Trevor Ariza, Ryan Anderson, Ariza and Anderson acquired this offseason, and DeAndre Ayton, the number one pick overall out of Arizona at the center spot. Our opening tap brought to you by SoFi, a modern finance company. And the first thing, Jim, is DeAndre Ayton is a large man. Uh, yes, he is. See him next to Damian Jones, and they list Ayton at 7'1", 250. High school in a suburb of Phoenix, and of course, Arizona for one year. And now he plays for the Phoenix Suns, whom we watched growing up. Bob, Jim, Kareth Burke with you tonight. Ariza coming over from Houston to do just that for the Phoenix Suns. And with so many young players, provide some veteran stability. Derek yeah. Collins, Ben Taylor, and Jonathan Sterling will be blowing the whistles tonight. They need to play better defense this year, and that's one thing their new coach is emphasizing. So Aiden is there, and he got a piece of Damian right there. Beautiful block. Without even jumping. Caught him on the way up. It hit the three. Brian Anderson was out of bounds when he caught that. Now the dribble here got Jones in trouble. It gave Aiton time to recover. If he could have gone right back up, he might have been able to slide that one in. Daniel House Jr. has an opportunity to make this Warrior team. Spin, post, and hammer. Well, Kevon Looney now in his fourth year. He's had all that experience last year and playing in the playoffs. He was terrific in the Western Conference Finals against Houston. Speaking of Houston, Ryan Anderson was in last year. So was Ariza. And Daniel House with the Warriors now played for Phoenix right. last year. Actually had a pretty good game against the Warriors, one of them, if I remember. Anderson missing there. He makes such a great point about Kevon, Jim. Confidence is repeated success. And the more Steve trusted him, the more he responded. You're doing it in the crucible of the playoffs. Well, he, he doesn't make mistakes now. He hasn't been a great offensive player, but I love the way he established that left foot pivot foot and he pinned his man so he couldn't recover and a nice spin move. Almost like blocking off the board. Kevin Durant floating behind the backboard didn't matter anyway. What a game for KD in Seattle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved him seeing him that. Sonic's jersey coming yep. on, number 40. Yeah, the Sean Kemp jersey. Josh Jackson. And Durant contested that beautifully. Jackson was the fourth pick a year ago. He can score. And Rudy again. I love how he made that dribble. One dribble worked for him, pushed it ahead, and then ran to it. So he beat everybody to the spot. Draymond Green's had a little tendonitis in the knee, so Kevon getting the start. Anderson out of the corner, and three-point defense is the one area that the Warriors had slipped last year. Beautiful drop. Damian Jones and House were on the same page, and for Damian, that's good awareness. That comes from just playing more. That's one reason the Warriors like to push it. it teams have a strip by Stephen here. Oh, Steph, little show and go with the left hand. He makes it look simple. Oh, that's a mistake, but they get cut recover. House, he saved the layup, and KD was there rotating too. And Curry here, they, his three-point proficiency gets people to come out beyond where they want to, and they leave their feet, as he did there. And then, of course, his left hand has gotten better and better every year really is the most underrated part of Steph's game, that left hand. He, he gets a lot of drives inside. People don't, they, he's not just a three-point shooter, not a specialist there. 
Solely a specialist there. Okay, so can you believe that it's the 10th year for Steph Curry? I, 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 I held up 10 fingers before the game. Hey, there's the new coach from Serbia. Igor Kokoshkov. A little SH is what that signal above the S is for. Well, over the last 10 years. And now there's three by Phoenix. Ariza <laughs> knocking it down. Phoenix was dead last in three-point percentage last year, so Anderson and Ariza will help pick up the slack there. Yeah. That's a great catch by Damian Jones. Steph fired that. Damian was ready, and DJ grabbed it and finished. It's all threes for the Suns, and why not? They made four of them. Well, they, they get double duty from Ariza because he's a heck of a defender, and that's what Igor Kukoshko likes to do, play defense. They've got to pick it up this year. They had been with Utah and Quinn Schneider. Kukoshko. Grant following his own miss a couple times. You know, we're four minutes in, Jim, and it is odd with the season a week away to think of a team firing their general manager, but one week ahead. Yeah, the, the Phoenix Suns let Ryan McDonough go today. The GM that drafted DeAndre Ayton, as well as Jackson, as well as Devin Booker. But then again, Phoenix last year, they, they made a coaching change three games into the season. That's the left-hand pass Steph wants to avoid. And Ayton handled it. Warriors got back on defense. Take a look at his post game here. He's the number one pick in the draft. This is the mid-range, but Ryan Anderson's always been a good offensive rebounder. He hits threes, but he gets on the offensive boards. His minutes went down last year in Houston, but we know what he can do. Curry with a three and the foul. An opportunity for a four-point play. This is the new rule, Jim, they instituted last year. They don't want people underneath shooters. And for Steph with his ankle issues, that's even more important. And Derek Collins did the sweep the leg as he indicated the foul call. You just can't yep. do that anymore. It's dangerous. Derek Collins, the uh, veteran official tonight, lead official, 18 years in the league. And that timing for to Steph Curry, the pass was right on the money. He picks it up all in rhythm. This game is so much about rhythm particularly on a shot. Damian fighting with Aiton. He came off to help, but a nice finish by Ariza. Trevor Ariza is not a complimentary piece here in Phoenix, Jim. He's going to get to do what he yeah. wants. Well, he didn't shoot and play like that in Game 7 against the Warriors oh, in the Western Conference man. Finals when he didn't score. Oh, and it was 0 for 12. 0 for 27 for the Rockets at one point on Darius. Yes. yes, he was 0 for 12 yep. in the game and 0 for 9 from three-point range and didn't shoot a free throw. 6.32 remaining in the first. KD floating out of bounds. He made it anyway. By T. Tyler Ulyss started for the Warriors at point guard in the last game in Seattle. Tonight, he's facing his old team, the Phoenix Suns. Now, Ulyss started 58 games for the Suns, but they waived him in June. So now, trying to find his way with the Warriors, either on this roster outright or as a two-way player or in the G League. And Ulyss told me one of the people helping him weather the uncertainty of where his career will go next is Draymond Green. They're both from Michigan. And Draymond has been a sounding board for Ulyss since he came into the NBA in 2016. The thing about it, Kareth, is that when Bob Myers talks to players, and you mentioned Draymond talking to Tyler, okay, if you don't make the team, you might go to Santa Cruz. Except Quinn Cook went to Santa Cruz and ended up winning a ring. <laughs> you know, and so the Warriors, they, they have no problem moving guys up and down, really giving opportunities to players. And so that has been noticed. And so the G League with the Warriors won Santa Cruz is an incredible place to play. But it's not like the big club has forgotten the Santa Cruz Warriors over the past couple of years. It's a beautiful dish from Shaquille Harrison to DeAndre Ayton. Well, this is the inexperience of Damian Jones. He's got to realize he's got to protect the basket. The men will recover. You want to yield an outside shot, but never a dunk if you have a choice. And this is some of the mis these are some of the mistakes that he's got to grow through and he's got to learn. By the way, 
Tyler Eudis knows how to play basketball. He Absolutely. has a terrific floor general. Terrific. That's a wing jumper. Now, Eulis has been a point guard his whole life. Yep. You know, it's, he knows who he is. He can run a team. His biggest battle is his size. Quickness is amazing. That good games even against the Warriors. Jackson, pretty frisky move, but credit Damian Jones coming to help out House. Jackson likes to shoot it. He, and he's capable. You can see that the difference is this is where Damian Jones playing with the All-Stars, hands ready and be ready to finish because they're going to look for him. Got one from Steph, he caught one from Durant. So take me through Kevin and Damian's thought here, Jim. Well, Kevin's going to Kevin's going to draw a crowd. And that's where Aiton comes up, commits to Kevin Durant and it's an easy pass and smart to throw it on the bounce. And one thing about Damian, we saw him last year in little and limited time with the Warriors up here with the big squad. Sometimes didn't have his hand ready. And, and now he's getting his hands ready and ready to catch a ball, either on the floor or in the air. Season starting Tuesday at 7.30. The Warriors taking on the Thunder opening night presented by Rakuten. All fans will receive a Warrior Championship t-shirt and arrive early to witness the ring ceremony and banner unveiling. And if you go to warriors.com, there's a special VIP experience. You can win two floor seats and get a chance to see the rings in person. That's all at warriors.com. So hopefully avail yourself of that contest and give yourself a chance for something really special on opening night. Grant doubled and knocked away. Reese has always been a good defender. Ryan Anderson, a deep three. Well, he'd already hit a couple of them, two or three, so he thought I'd just stretch it out to Steph Curry land. Now the Warriors are shooting 79%. They've turned it over a couple times. That one deflected off the Suns. So Quinn Cook has checked in, Jim, and his time in Santa Cruz, he was fantastic. 50, 40, 90. He was a G League All-Star. And as Curry went down, he came alive. What a year, really the story of the year for the Warriors. You can see what he does in the G League. He's such a great shooter. 50, 40, 90. He just is so smooth and he has such great rhythm and a feel for the game to Steph Curry. Well, Isaiah Cannon has checked in. He's an absolute three-point bombardier, as is Troy Daniels, who's playing alongside him. So and Cannon can be a pretty good defender and a nuisance. Even more three-point shooter. So Aiden inside, and he's not just a dunker. That was a pretty move with that baby right hook. Well, oh, he's legit, and he's shooting 58% in the preseason so far. Uh -oh. That was a foul. Kevin got uh, Aiton. Got underneath him there and they got tangled up. A little dangerous for the Yankees. But this kid, Aiton, he can do it all. One shot. Scores inside, got a nice little jump hook as we saw. Jonas Jarebko checking in. We were kind of admiring Jarebko's three-point shooting pregame. He's going to help the Warriors. We're going to get a moving screen there. And we're actually going to call Steph for an offensive foul. He kind of bewildered. I guess he had a little collision with the reason. He may be bleeding. So the infectious disease control, they want a reason to get that taken care of, I think. He's got to take the towel with him. We showed it at the beginning of the broadcast, but Steph Curry from midcourt with the no look one hand <laughs> half court shot yesterday. It was the highlight of the open practice when they had the whole team shoot half court shots. Demarcus Cousins was the first player to shoot. He hit his shot from half court on his first attempt. So Curry picks up a second foul here. And both of them at the offensive end. Yeah, if you're tuning in expecting to see. Draymond or Clay Thompson or Sean Livingston or Andre Iguodala, they are they're all resting tonight. And so yeah, that's it's a lot of blood to deal with. We're not trying to say go watch the NFL instead of this. So. Hot <laughs> transition? Yes, transition. Greg Papa, Dante Whitner, Jeff Garcia, Niner pre and post game.
as they take on the Packers on Monday night. That'll be live from Pete's Tavern. And the 49ers, five turnovers against the Cardinals in a game they absolutely dominated, except they kept giving the ball away. Incredibly frustrating. Yes. I love the NFL. I watch a lot of it all through the week. I love the talent. Both the quarterbacks and wide receivers, and I love Deshaun Watson. He's now my favorite, but my new favorite. Trevor Ariza is crushing it from three-point land. He's got 11 in all three of his threes. But Deshaun Watson was 32 and three as a college player at Clemson, including a national championship, and he is a leader. Yes, he is. He's got Moxie. All these young kids do. Baker Mayfield. I tell you what, I like that wide receiver though, Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins? Oh man, fantastic. I really like that. How about Jordan Bell standing up to Aiton? Shot clock at three, and man, everybody in the Suns uniform is striping it from distance. Here's Canada, and remember Phoenix released him last February, right. then they re-signed him in August this year. Riza holding on to Jordan Bell. So the Phoenix Suns putting on a shooting display. But the Warriors have a shooter of their own, Mr. Curry, with 11 in the first quarter. All of them for Clay Thompson in the first quarter in Seattle. 19 points. Now, Ian Durant he mentioned the Sean Camp jersey and Kevin coming back to Seattle. But don't forget that Clay played at Washington State. So there are some Cougars in the house, and he had 19 in that first quarter and in the preseason the three big guns are really striping it for three but the rest of the Warriors not so much five of 34 from distance there's a little more pressure on people when they're trying to make a roster that is already built right. and they know really what's going on and number of spots there's only one spot open um, but of course they're playing for their lives and maybe get picked up by another team and they want to do well but these other guys you're talking those big three there they're relaxed. They know what they're doing, and it makes it a lot easier. How about Quinn Cook with a beautiful drive? So, Jim, you're going out on a limb and saying that Curry, Clay, and Durant have made the team this year? <laughs> now, here's what I'd like to see about Quinn Cook. I know he can shoot. I'd like to see him do, play better man-to-man -man defense, particularly in the open court in transition. And Kenny ran Ariza off the line. That was definitely talked about during that Warrior timeout. The Suns have been six of eight on threes. Redco's going to get open threes. That is a great side right there. Well, he had a good defender, Ariza, come at him, but he was not on the shooting hand side. He didn't have time enough to get there, so he was on the left side, so it did not deter Jonas from shooting it. Oh, that's a beautiful cut by Troy Daniels. Now, we call him Jonas, and, but I've talked to him earlier, and he said, yeah, it's actually Jonas. Okay. Jonas. The Swedish version is Jonas. But he said, you call me whatever you want. Deal there and able to finish. It's Quinn Cook with Jacob Evans, the number one pick. Jonas Jerevko with Alfonso McKinney. He'd go back and forth and Jordan Bell. Well, if he starts making threes, if he makes J's, I'm going to put the J in it. Okay. okay. Jonas. Yeah, good. That's, that's a good way to do it. But if he's over, it'll be Jonas. I, okay. You've got a system. We'll I just like decide that. Decided to be shooting well that night. I like that system. So Tyson Chandler will be. He's only 38 now. Yeah, he'll be backing up DeAndre Ayton. And actually, that's a good player to learn from defensively. Yes. Chandler, the former defensive player of the year. Ariza's got to go into the locker room to have that cut in his mouth tended to. Chandler, 37, played, what, 26 minutes a game last year? 25, 26 minutes a game. We have a foul on the pass, I believe. A little collision. Yeah, that's going to be on Jordan Bell. Retko's trying to. We take the charge. Kitty actually will be whistled for the infraction. The, they call this a blocking foul? No, the, the difference, they said McKinney pushed the oh, player yeah. into Jarevko. Yeah. That was correctly okay. called. All right. Both officials did the right thing. Jonathan Sterling had a, a charge, which it was, but Ben Taylor saw from behind that McKinney had created the issue there and that's just what he Ben just told Jonas there yeah I think his foot might have been inside that lane also the uh, 
arc into the, into the basket. Right, three second violations, so a technical free throw made. High scoring first quarter, and Igor likes it. Well, I think they've added more talent to this team, clearly. The veterans he's, in. He's, he's the seventh coach in the last 10 years. That's. Jacob Evans with a steal. Push ahead, Quinn Cook. Direct coach running with him. And he didn't drop it off, and Warren sent him away. Well, T.J. Warren, 20 points a game last year. He just times this perfectly. And sometimes you say, oh, you take it on the left side, the left hand. Sometimes the right hand comes underneath that and gets in between the glass and the rim, and you can't get to it with the right hand. You've got to be a little taller, or at least get a little higher up to do that. So Warren fouling Jarebko there. That was an easy block. For, this is an offensive-minded guy. I mean, you, you attack the rim so much. What, what's the decision on, hey, I've got Jarebko running to drop it, or I can get and sneak it in? How do you do that? The best thing you can do is pretend like you're you know, showing the ball, like you're going to release it, and make him commit, bring it back a little bit, let him go by with the arm or whatever, his body, whatever, and then, and then do it again. But you, in order to do that, it's, uh, it's kind of an art form. And certainly Quinn Cook is capable. I thought he might go up and go underneath and reverse it. But if you go the same rhythm, which he did, it's tall man's going to win. It's an easy, easy, easy block because the timing is there for you. So you've got to change your timing and, yeah. and change and, and change the direction just a little bit, maybe. And that's what Steph Curry so brilliant with. It's the whole John Wooden be quick but don't hurry. Yeah, and you guys that block shots love to block shots. So you want to just go in there and show them that ball, and but then bring it back, bring it back to your to your chest a little bit, and let them just swing at something and get air, and then you just release it. But you have to have an angle. Now that we're having a conference here. It's almost like uh, this is why football games are four hours long. <laughs> I'm serious. College games. Well, Mike Tomlin, the coach of the Steelers, said. Officiating the NFL is ruining the sport. He might be right. Uh, that's the, the new rule about the quarterback. Oh, there's just there's just too many infractions. Yeah. How, how do you slow up your momentum? You're going in, and anyway, we'll get it back. Yeah, they're just sorting out who the foul is on. Double tap, but right to McKinney. Shot clock at seven. Alfonso McKinney just dropping that in. There are some players on this roster that uh, aren't going to be around. But they're very capable. Two years at Eastern Illinois, two years at Wisconsin Green Bay. Played last year for Toronto and had the training camp deal here. And as Jim mentioned, there without Pat McCall in camp, there is a, a roster spot on the World Champions. And Jackson. If the Suns decide to shoot threes like this, Jim, they'll be a playoff team. Well, he's, he, he shot 26% from three last year's rookie year. So he's improved. 70% on threes for Phoenix. 70% in this first quarter. Multiple players. Kenny made one. Back guy in there. We're going to have DeMarcus Cousins sit with us in the second quarter. So looking forward to that conversation. Marcus has fit in wonderfully with this roster. T.J. Warren, he, he, he can score. <laughs> yes, he is. He can score. And final three seconds. Jacob Evans at two. Evans with a step back. And shot it long. So DeMarcus Cousins is going to hang out, put a headset on and in 10 last year. And this is one of them. DeMarcus Cousins joining us on this broadcast, getting ready to start the second quarter. And first and foremost, you violated the first rule. You can't be more handsome than the broadcaster. So. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, how's this first camp been with the Warriors, and how you fit in? It's been fun. Uh, you know, uh, you know, building chemistry with the guys. You know, everybody's getting to know each other. Outside of you know what we already know, but of course, going through 82 game season, you know, you get you, you grow to know a person a lot more. So uh, you know, it's just the beginning of that, and uh, we've been having fun growing. Uh, you know, I'm supporting the guys as much as I can. I'm helping these young guys, helping these young bigs. You know, I'm just playing my part, doing the most I can. How much were the friendships made in the World Championship team with, with Steph and the Olympic team with Draymond and KD and Clay? And 
You know, they raved about you to Bob Myers when you were considering signing with the Warriors. Uh, you know, it, it was a great experience. Um, you know, that's an experience we'll never be able to forget. You know, uh, being able to represent our country, win a gold medal at the same time. So uh, that bond and that chemistry will always be there. So uh, just to add that onto, like I said, this long 82-game season, uh, it'll only grow from here. So, uh, you know, I'm with a great group of guys, and I'm, I'm super excited. Jamarcus, you talk about a great group of guys. Uh, yes, they've been to the finals three of the last four years winning championships. Excuse me, four years in a row, but three championships. But there's also, there's an aura about this group. Um, if they weren't NBA champions, they're still, is this team different than you, the teams that you've been around? Uh, it's not even the team. It's, it's the entire organization. It's just from 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 top to bottom, uh, the way they carry themselves, they 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 build a winning culture here. Uh, you can everything is built for success, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, like I said, everybody thinks it's just the talent on the floor, but you know, this is a machine, well well oiled and well built, and it's from top to bottom. Also, too, Steve Kerr makes sure that fun is at the top of the agenda. It's a team that enjoys being around each other as Chandler Absolutely. scores inside and practices. There's there's serious work, but there's also some joy and some fun in the game. That's, that's one thing about it. Uh, the environment that's set here, you enjoy coming to work every day. And, uh, you know, that's hard to say. It's just like any job. Uh, it's days that you don't want to come to work, but I mean, every day you're coming in and, you, and you're expected to have fun. You're expected to work, but at the same time, you're going to have fun doing it. DeMarcus, I think you're probably the most surprising signing of the offseason that no one ever expected DeMarcus Cousins to end up being a Golden State Warrior, back-to-back uh, -back NBA champions. When did that come to fruition for you? And, and, I'm, and from what I understand, you said to the, your uh, agent, hey, let me do the calling and I'll, I'll pick up the phone and make the deal. Uh, you know, you know, certain things played out the way it did and, uh, you know, I brought up, you know, the Warriors and, you know, my agent, I told them to make the call and, you know, it happened. And of course, you know, being in the position that they're in and, you know, the history that we've had with our battles, uh, I would expect, you know, Bob and, and Coach Carter to think of it as a joke, but uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it quickly became a reality. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm glad the decision was made and I'm glad we could all agree on this decision. And, you know, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to a big season. I think when you talk to the guys, they always reference the Bob Myers phone call. Hey, DeMarcus Cousins wants to come play with us. It's Steph, Steph, Draymond, KD, they're like, are you kidding me? Is that real? Is that real? Right. Uh, I mean, just the excitement that those guys show with, you know, the, the opportunity to uh, make me be a part of this team. I mean, even days after, you know, it was still, I was getting random texts from Steph, random texts from uh, yeah. Kevin. Uh, like, KD just FaceTime me randomly, just, you know, all teeth, all smiles, excited about it. So, uh, you know, seeing that come from your teammates after all they've already done, I mean, that's a pretty cool feeling. The best is yet to come because when you get on the floor and you're able to do that and play with that group of four all-stars, you can't get double teamed anymore. You've been playing your whole career getting double and triple teamed, and now you're going to have single coverage a lot of the time. How does that sound? Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, to say the least, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Take me through part of your game where you shot 35% on threes last year. You clearly can make that shot, and yet you can beast guys on the block. So how do you make that decision for, I, I'm going to shoot from the perimeter, or I'm going to go work someone down low? I mean, how do you read that? Uh, you know, I'm a guy that I don't I don't want to be put into a box. I don't I don't want to limit myself as a player. I want to be a threat from every spot on the floor, and that's that's something I've continued to work on throughout my career, and um, you know I'm going to continue to work at it. So uh, that's just my mindset. I don't want to be able to be stopped from any uh, spot on the floor. Also, too, Jim pointed out, I think from your rookie year on, you're an elite passer for a big man. And uh, that fits right in with what the Warriors like to do. Uh, yeah, um, you know, credit credit my high school coach Otis Hughley. Uh, he really, you know, he really taught me the value of you know making the guys around you better, uh, making the game easier for yourself as well with the pass. So, uh, with all that being said, he really helped me develop that part of my game early on in my career, my high school career, and uh, you know, it's carried over to this point. How do you watch a, a guy like DeAndre Ayton, who was the number one pick? Here's a young big, is getting ready for his first season. You went through that, all the eyes on you coming out of Kentucky. But what's the first thing young big guys see 
when they, they jump into the deep end of the pool? I look at the mechanics. I look at the footwork. I look at the, uh, you know, the rhythm of the game for the big man. Uh, you know, there's some guys that come in at a, you know, kind of mechanical, but uh, with this young fella, you can tell he, he, he has a great feel for the game. He has great touch. And uh, just on top of that, just with the way the game is going, I'm excited for any big man with talent. Uh, you know, they're trying to make us extinct in this game, and, uh, you know, we just keep coming back with a, a fresh face. So uh, I think I think the league's in a great place when it comes to bigs. There's a lot of talented guys, and, uh, you know, I, I, hopefully this trend continues to uh, happen. So if you're guarding him later in the season, though, how do you let that, that rookie know? Oh, we'll leave that for that moment. <laughs> we'll leave that for that moment. <laughs> D.J. Warren said it to Josh Jackson in Phoenix. Yeah, they look really good. Their youngsters are playing well. They're getting up and down, and Steve Kerr is going to use the timeout. DeMarcus Cousins is hanging out with us. 8.45 remaining in the first half, and the Suns up 13. Kerr, he had five titles as a player, three as a coach, and he only has the best winning percentage in NBA history in the regular season and the postseason. And then 73 wins. Coach of the year, 24 of those to begin the year, courtesy of Luke Walton on that 24 nothing thing. But what has Steve Kerr been like to Marcus Cousins to, uh, to he, talk to? He's been incredible, man. Uh, you know, he's, he's so easy going, he, he's so understanding. Uh, he's been on both sides of this thing, so uh, he can understand where a player is coming from, he can understand where a coach is coming from. Uh, he's done it at all levels. He's also been to gym, so he, I, I, I think, I believe he just has a total understanding of, you know, this entire business. So, uh, you know, with that combination, uh, I, you get a Steve Kerr. Yeah. He, he knows how to talk to people with different personalities and communicate, and he can embrace all those different personalities. And you've got a personality, so <laughs> you guys, you're going to get along just fine because he, he's. It used to be, Demarcus. It used to be a league where you. The head coach was almost like a drill sergeant. Oh, absolutely. Those, those things are, that, that, those days are past. For sure. <laughs> he has a lot of fun, and he, and he enjoys his players. He does. So Warren, an air ball there. Jarebko contested that nicely. Jacob Evans and Steph with Jordan Bell Durant. Will Chamberlain led the league in assists at the center spot. If you ever want to lead the league in assists, just pass to like Steph and KD and Clay. I mean, I know. got a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> Although they can pile up their assists passing to you too. That's true. Yeah, that, you might think about that one game. Say, let me see if I can get 15 assists tonight. <laughs> and I bet you can. Hey, that's not a bad idea at all. Just for fun, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the things with you on the scouting report off the court is that whether it be in New Orleans or Sacramento. How important all the off the court things they say DeMarcus Cousins does more with kids and schools and charities never wants a camera around doesn't want it to be known but you want to be embedded in the community that you're playing in it's a rarity no matter where you go it's been a super priority for you yeah, it's not even the community I'm playing in. it's just the communities in, in, in general uh, you know, these kids are our future uh, they need they need all the inspiration they can get a positive inspiration it's a it's enough negativity in the world as it is so uh i'm just trying to play my part doing what i can to help and um you know hopefully we can lead these kids in the right direction well, you're going to fit in nicely because kevin durant won the community assist award he donated 13 million dollars last year 10 to kids in dc 3 million in texas steph curry and his entire family are relentless with that and with the warriors you know, there's two football teams and two baseball teams in the Bay, but one basketball team, you know, in an area of nearly 9 million people. And so yeah, from Joe Lake on down, they kind of look at it as being a community citizen. Uh, that's right up your alley. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a great combination. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can, you know, continue to make an impact on these communities. You know, like I said, uh, lead these kids in the right direction. So now I want to know, in previous years, Clay Thompson and Zaza Pachulia, they, they had a, a dunk contest. Who could have the most dunks? Neither one of them dunked, oh okay? God. So it's kind of a running joke. <laughs> so here's my thing. Take it in the spirit, I'm bringing it up. You and Draymond, who's going to get a fewer number of technical fouls now? Oh, that, that would be me. That, that would be me, for sure. <laughs> really? Yeah. Fewer than Draymond. Fewer than Draymond. Good for you. That's a good goal. Because Jim and I might keep track of that this year now. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. All right. Sometimes your reputation, and it's not always warranted, but it precedes you a little bit, and, and officials uh, make an assumption. They don't give you as much leeway as they would some other players. That's true. I used to get about seven or eight a year. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, yeah, for DeMarcus, sure. Jim kicked the ball into the upper deck. See, I've, true, I've never true, done that. That's I've a never true done story. It. it felt good. <laughs> and the kid caught it, DeMarcus, and went out of the arena. He, he, he did, and there were no balls out here. They had to go in the locker room and bring one out. He, he punted one into the upper deck. Yeah. That is an absolute true story. Yeah, so. I'm not ready for that part yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass on that one. It was worth the fine. Take it right out of the official. In my game. book, I'm looking at a two-game suspension. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but don't, don't do that. Yeah, like I said, I pass on that. <laughs> Jordan Bell's been working on that big range. Durant stepped out of his shoe. Well, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened in the Pumas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's almost like it's almost like the new All-Star signed a new shoe deal that we should be aware of. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened in Pumas. <laughs> Puma life, baby. I remember when Pumas first came in. You know the first player that I remember wearing a Puma? He was the New York Nick. Clyde. You got it. Well, Jim, this, Clyde, Walt Frazier. Th this is where Steph drives inside. DeMarcus has a sense of the moment. He hit a half-court shot at the open practice, yeah. and he took his shoe off and raised it up right after the, the half-court shot. You know, I got to represent. That's good knowledge that you knew that Walt Frazier wore the Pumas, for sure. Teammate of mine. Oh, really? <laughs> so Phoenix is going to take time. DeMarcus Cousins is going to hang out for one more segment. Warriors getting back in the ball game, down eight midway through the second. Marcus Derrickson, I got to talk to Jordan and Damian. Let me get over there because I got a few things to say while they're coming back in yep. this game. No, he's serious about it. Remember the game that uh, we televised uh, a little over a week ago? Yep. That uh, he was talking to Damian Jones. Absolutely. Giving him some advice. Well, this is where Steve Kerr, as Ryan Anderson rebounds that, Steve Kerr has a great feel for things. If you put DeMarcus in a suit and you sit him at the end of the bench, now he's like, put a uniform on, yep. sit with the guys, watch these big guys, and, and chat with them. And tell them what you see, tell them where they can improve. And DeMarcus embraced that right away. Yeah, and, he just, and, he's got good leadership qualities. So you, you, your perception of someone, if you haven't been around them, and you only watch them on TV, or whatever it may be, and watch them play basketball, and uh, you get a whole different feeling. By the way, Arisa back in, along with Anderson. Oh, good put by KD. And Kevon Looney saw him the whole time. Yes, and the defense didn't. But Ariza and Anderson combined for 19 points in that first quarter. Right on seven of ten shooting and five of them were made threes so the uh, i'd say the houston rockets uh, have an impact on the game tonight all right well i'll, <laughs> I'll put you in an impossible situation here a little glimpse of Aiton. Yeah, give me your considered opinion on some thoughts here i, I i've got to see him more but I, he's legit he's he's got good size uh he knows that he's got to protect the rim he doesn't seem to be too anxious and worried about his scoring, which I like. I think also, too, he, he, he is not running around at 100 miles nope. an hour and looking like the game is too big for him. Nope, not at all. I think that's a good good point, good observation. So he acts like he's been here before. I mean, that baby hook kind of had you shaking your head. As Aiton's got six points on three of five shooting. Josh Jackson's two of nine. Very misfiring there. You know, I think of Aiton, and I think of Joel, Joel Embiid, and let's see what Aiton does with it there, where he dropped it. But I always felt that Joel Embiid likes to dominate the ball a little bit more. There's Aiton cutting to the basket, moving without the ball right there, just a simple little play, saying, okay, hey, what can I do here? My man's going over, he's got his head turned, I'm going to go back door, and I might get something, and he did. But Joel Embiid seems like he likes to take the ball up and make all kinds of moves and do things. And Aiton doesn't seem to command the ball. But let's face it, uh, the rookie season hasn't really begun for him yet. No, that's true. We'll see. I'm just saying, a lot of the one-and-done guys look so overwhelmed at the adjustment of the NBA. He, DeAndre Aiton does not. No. And uh, every year, you know, you've seen these young guys over a period of time. Donovan Mitchell. I mean, these guys come in now. They're a little different than they were, you know, five and ten years ago. with one and done. Uh, this they're is more mature. This is something Damian's going to have to deal with. Is, you know, when are you setting a screen to roll, and when is that a moving screen? This was kind of a tough one, where he got called for for the knee there, 
And then Kevin Durant actually got a technical foul. He has not appreciated a couple of the calls in the second quarter. And he really was more protecting his his youngster. Saying, wait a minute, well, that was a good screen and roll. Don't don't call that. If Phoenix plays like they are right now, they're gonna win a lot of games. Let's watch this screen by Damian. Well, Steph Curry's gotta wait for him to get there. You know, it's it's half of half of it's on him there. And Damian didn't have a good screen position. He's leaning yep. and not upright. So, but Steph has to be a little more patient. Especially with an inexperienced player. So there's an offensive foul the other way. But what I'm going to say, this is on eight. Bob, this team. And you can see KD's talking exactly that. You know, with the starters and with four all stars, and even Steph is telling just what you just said. You know, I'm going to set it, but I probably went too early. I put you okay. in a bad spot. And so that was kind of the two all stars kind of schooling the young kid. Well, Phoenix, 21 and 61, they were the last, the worst record in the league. They're going to be better than that this year based well, upon what we've seen tonight. Well, that's the one thing with DeJounte Murray going out with the ACL. The Spurs are a playoff team that are going to be in jeopardy this year in the West, Jim, yeah. because Denver didn't make it. Yes. I, I think the Nuggets are, are ready to roll. San Antonio is looking for their 22nd straight playoff season, which would tie the NBA record. Hurry with a left hand again. See what he did there to avoid a block? Just put it up higher. Okay. The defender was there, but he just put it up higher so he couldn't get to it. Stefan's been really good in the first half. It's an art form. Driving in, scoring over bigs. Aiden lost it out of bounds. Let's watch Steph here. Now Aiden's coming, and he sees that, but it's just artful. It's uh, beautiful that off the tip of the backboard up there, kisses it off cleanly and so sweet. A little miscommunication there, and Cannon had read the mail. But the Warriors, too many turnovers in the first half. Steve Kerr will talk about that as they've hit double digits. Daniel House Jr. Banking it up and in, and that's a good note call. Well, Cannon had position, but he gave position. He could have taken charge there and opted not to. Phoenix had been up 13. Warriors within five right now. Bob Myers is going to join us in the third quarter. The Warriors actually signed a player tonight. We'll ask Bob about that. Will Cherry is now a Warrior. Damian Jones high for that rebound. Looney contested on the three and then ran the floor. Steph on a catch and shoot. And he was fouled once on a three, this time fouled again. And three free throws. Well, Kevon Looney had a mismatch and all of a sudden he draws a crowd of Phoenix Suns and they forget about the shooter outside. Someone's got to be a little more aware. That's going to cost him three free throws. Steph, three free throws here. You can get a Steph Curry Rep the Bay Champions Parade t-shirt for only $30. Tonight's item of the game. Available in women and men's styles and while supplies last, call WarriorTeamStore.com. Steph is the only warrior in double figures. Risa has a dozen for Phoenix. So from down 13 to within two, on the 13 3 run. Well, they started paying attention to shooters and playing a little more defense. Aiden with an elbow jumper. Oh, he's, he's got a good touch. We've seen him move without the ball. We've seen the baby hook. We've seen him dunk. And now the 15 footer. Shot 61%. He's one year at Arizona. Oh, oh man. Aiden got poked in the eye as Damian went up high for that lob. Reza missing. Reza trying to reignite that hot shooting he had at the beginning of the game. Looney moved his feet and he drew the charge. How about that? Well, remember I said they're all different at the top of the show. Kevon Looney can defend small. We, we saw him in the Western Conference Finals against Houston. This is absolutely brilliant defense. Moving his feet, anticipating, and taking away the drive. And if you're a high school player, 
He never reached with his hands. Nope. It's all with his feet. When, when you reach with your hands, nice pass. Damian. Damian. Come on, a little big to big pass. Yeah, when you reach with your hands, your feet stop moving. And you keep them, you keep those feet moving, you get it's called position. Shot clock at seven. Ryan Anderson gonna try to step back on KD. And Damian Jones. He was waiting on that one. Good team help there. He thought he had something, but Damian Jones thought differently. I'm excited for Damian. Yeah, he's such a good kid. You just hope that he'd be ready for this opportunity, and I think he is. Curry from deep, and Jones with a rebound. Somehow found House in the corner. Final minute, well, back it out with seven to shoot. And 13 down, looking to tie. KD takes the rookie and gets to the line. Rookie stayed with him pretty well. Yeah, he did. Got to give it to him. I think Kevin's just testing right there. You know, say, let's see, let's see if I can beat this kid, see what he has. He's going to play there. These teams are going to meet very early in the season, if I recall. Yeah, that's after the Warriors' first road trip. It's a Monday night with Phoenix coming the second week of the season. Xfinity X1 customers say, show me the Golden State Warriors on your X1 remote. Get live stats on your TV and change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. I wonder if you just say in that remote, get me Barnett, if they just turn the Warrior game right on. <laughs> Let me see Burke and Barnett. <laughs> so the Warriors have tied it with 45 seconds left in the first half. Aiden on Damian Jones, it's a good matchup. Looney knocked it away, but a foul in the process. He's going to pick up the personal. Warriors are over the limit, so Kavon with the foul, and DeAndre Aiton to shoot two. From the Bahamas, he was the Pac-12 Player of the Year. As Jim mentioned, high school in the Phoenix area. I'd say his college numbers were solid. And he shot, and he could shoot threes in college. Well, but his shoes are not going to be noticed very much at all, Jim, because you know so many guys wear the fluorescent orange highlighters. I mean, you just you barely even notice somebody who's running down the court. Damian Jones rolled, he caught it, got in his own miss, and got to the line. There was a little rugged play. And DJ, second effort, gets some free throws. He has to understand, you got to mix it up in there. He's been reluctant to do that. I like to see him get more physical. Maybe one little pump fake and then up. Might have had a three-point play possibility. In terms of the, the raw skills, there's not a lot Damian Jones cannot do. And he talked to Ron Adams and the coaching staff. Yeah. They, in terms yep. of wingspan and elevation and shooting touch. I mean, they, they are very excited about what Damien could be. And they've worked tirelessly yes. with this youngster. Yeah, Ron took him right from day one. Started working with him. I think of, of all the players, if you said dunk the ball, and you know, how, see if you can get 10 dunks in 15 seconds. You know, dunk, grab the ball, go back up. I think Damian could do it, come closest to do that. Okay. I don't think anybody else could. Go up and down, up and down, up and down. Nice kick out by Aiton, and that's the three. DeAndre Aiton is showing a lot of different facets to the game. Shot clock off, final six seconds. Steph driving at three. Aiton with Curry on him at one, a little step back. Will do it for the first half. Well, three is a story for uh, the Phoenix Suns. That's where they've won the game so far. Highly entertaining first half. Bob Myers will join us in the third quarter. It's the Suns up four at the break. Jack in the box at the half is coming up next. Kevin Durant, the Warriors GM, Bob Myers. I know that was a very difficult decision, but a pretty good uh, talent acquisition on your part there. 
Yeah, that's where uh, it was It was touch and go there when we ultimately <laughs> decided to take the risk. No, he's been great. We had, we had another one of your acquisitions sit with us in the second quarter. You got to give us the real phone call of DeMarcus Cousins. What, what was that? Tell people what that was like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was one I didn't think it would come. That's for sure. But um, his agent, his representative, Jaron Kenna, said he wants to talk to you. And, you know, I felt like, and I said this, I thought it was just more him just being emotional because he hadn't gotten the offers I think he wanted. But when he said, are you available to talk? I said, oh, sure, I'll talk to him. And then once we started talking, I was just talking about him in the way of, you want any advice about where you might want to go? And then he, I want to play for you guys. And I said, that's fantastic. But we, we don't, we, your market is beyond what we can pay. And he said, I know what you can pay. Once he said that, I said, okay, we might have something here. But you also then ran it by oh, yeah. all the all-stars on the team. Yeah. Um, you no, I, I make all the decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, I ran it by the people that matter, like Steph Curry, Steve Kerr, Draymond <laughs> Green, Kevin Durant. Clay was in China. Clay is the only one I we didn't really. I was going to say, you couldn't find Clay, which well, is not, not, not surprising. He's the perfect one, though, to be absent. Because <laughs> he wouldn't care. He wouldn't care. He, he, would, he, would, I, yeah. he literally was sure. on a plane back from China, I think. We have had more oh, offensive fouls. This is the third offensive foul on Curry tonight. And now Steph's going to get a tee. Wow. In a preseason game. And Steve Kerr may get thrown out of the game. Steve Kerr is out in the middle of the court. It, 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 it. Ben Taylor. Oh, yeah, he's, he's gone. Yeah, he's Steve gone. just got tossed. Yeah. So it, it, Kevin's gone, too. So, so the earlier one that, that Kevin got was because of the same official. Um, yeah, Ben Taylor's having a tough night. He, he got teed up by the other official, right? but, but Kevin got worked up because of, I think, Ben, possibly. I just hate that for the fans. Yeah, it's not, okay. it's not great. Yeah. That's, so we, we get a myriad of technical fouls here. It'll be a couple on Steve, Durant, and Steph. Well, well Durant's gone, yeah. right? Because he already has one. Yeah. yeah. And Steve's gone. I don't know about Steph being gone. Derek Collins is the lead official, Bob. Right. He's, he's got 18 years of experience. He's yet to call a technical. Yeah. All right, so Steph right there. I couldn't see what he, I don't know. Well, they say he held on, I guess. Yeah. I, I didn't see the beginning of the play. A little back screen. And, and you can read Steve's lips and what are you doing? It's three offensive fouls on Steph Curry in a preseason game. And then Steve said, I don't want to be here. Goodbye. Well, we do have Andre in the back and Sean and Draymond and Clay, so at least he won't be by himself. Got but, a full team back there. Um, you know what? Who said you said it's just too bad for the fans. That's you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's I, too bad. That's it is. They, a lot of these people probably won't be able to go to a regular season that, game. You took the words right yeah. out of my mouth. It might be the only game they see yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, we're a week away from the regular season. And I said the fans are into it already. <laughs> I say Steve was into it and Kevin as well. I mean, uh, it's all right. You, you yeah. saw Stefan standing next to Derek Collins, and they were just conversing, you know, just a moment ago yeah. before they put the ball in play. And as I say, Collins has the experience here, and he's yet to call a technical. I didn't know I'd be coming on in this kind of drama here, I guys. I thought this would be a low-key deal. Bob Myers joins us, and the game falls apart. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Saw our coach get kicked out. Oh, man. Uh, and Powell wow. is going to try to really throw that down. He is athletic. I, I'd say the game has ramped up in some intensity here, but the Suns have continued to play well. It, we did want to ask you about the center spot. Well, I, I, I thought Kevin got kicked out of Did he not get another tee? Did he not? He got a tee in the first half. But he didn't get one there. I thought he got another. Those are all for Steve. All I didn't mean to ignore now. your questions. <laughs> it's okay. It's Jim's ignored me for years. It's okay. not a problem. My fault. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about Mike Brown, whether he went out to get the pizza or whether he picked up a tee. I don't know. Okay. Anderson, it's another three. So we're going to have a timeout here after a 10-0 <laughs> Phoenix run. And Bob Myers. <laughs> Is completely lost control of this third quarter. I think. I told him my office wasn't big enough, so I'm not happy about it. No, <laughs> no, that's great. It's unbelievable. I mean, really, it's. Um, I'm not. I'm joking, but uh, it's. Uh, have you been over there? Have you seen it lately? I, I have. It's tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it's. 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 Um, you got to see it, really. Well, I mean, the, the words don't do it justice. The all hands meeting. I, th I thought. They, they visually. 
showed you what it was going to look like when it's finished inside. I thought it was a terrific presentation. No, you're you're right. And, and look, all across the board, right? The, the yeah. practice facility sometimes gets overlooked in these yep. new arenas, and they'll just focus on the game arena. But practice facility, the offices, the surrounding area, it's all first class. It's, it's really nice. So now answer my question. <laughs> about the Warrior Centers here <laughs> with, with Damian Jones and Kavon and Jordan Bell. I've asked Steve about it. What, what's your impression on the three youngsters who played and kind of heading into the regular season, waiting until DeMarcus can come back? I think what we like is they all do something different, I would say, is uh, is something we like about it. It's the athleticism of Damian. He can, he can be in that JaVel role with kind of a finisher around the rim. We all know what Kavon can do. He's great. Great switching uh, defender, just a solid player. And then Jordan's the athleticism, switchability as well. Another athlete, so it's it's uh, it's tremendous. All right, so I'm going to make you put your hand on you know the, the Barnett Bible here for a second. You had to be shocked that Kevon Looney came back, given how well he played. That you weren't outbid, given you had limited resources yeah. to get him. But I'm so pleased that he's back with the Warriors. Yeah, and, and Steve, well, I, well, we like him too. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a combination of things. I think. You know, it's, uh, it was the market mostly. I think it was a tight market for agency. And a lot of people look at our team and, and maybe they looked at him and said, you know, he can't, not going to help us. He can only help the Warriors, which good for us, I suppose. I mean, we're happy to have him back and he's, he's going to play a lot. Yeah, that's an assumption I figured a lot of people would make. Mm -hmm. You know, he looks good around all those all-stars. But, you know, I saw him tonight in the first half. He, d he took a guard one-on-one -on -one and moved his feet and drew a charge. Kevon defensively. Yeah. I mean, he's so solid that way. But uh, with the thing I like about him and Damian, you guys have covered us since they've been here, certainly. Um, and we got Jacob now. So these guys take a little time, right? I mean, sure. Kevon at the outset, Damian at the outset. You know, now it's now we're into year three or four for, for Kevon, three for Damian. And they're starting to kind of figure it out. Kevon, you saw him kind of figure it out the last year and a half. And now you're seeing it with Damian. When you first got him, you kind of shake your head and you go, these guys going to have to get better. Yeah. But, but you draft guys with the idea of they're going to get better, uh, especially when you're picking in that range. So it's a credit to our coaching staff. It's a credit to the intellect and the work ethic of those guys. And um, Steve's going to use them. I mean, especially without DeMarcus. I mean, those are our guys, and it's going to be a rotation with Jordan in it as well. And like I said, we like that they all do something a little bit different. Yeah, and when guys like that come in, like the line, really, uh, and they're not natural scorers, they've got to do something. And it takes a while to learn, and so they really don't stand out. And it's a, it's, it's a tough road for them to uh, excel, and so you put them on the floor. And look, you guys know our offense. It's a lot of read and react stuff. I mean, the switching in the NBA now, they're going to take advantage of anybody they can. And the best thing, honestly, about Kevon and Jordan is they've got they've got real playoff experience, yes. both those guys. Now, yeah. Damien doesn't have that, but hopefully we can get some of that this year. That stuff's immeasurable to perform at that level. It's a different game in the playoffs. Steph Curry missing that three. Take, take the pulse of your team in that there's no China trip. There seems to be an energy and a freshness to this training camp. Coaches, players, the, the open practice yesterday, everybody's having so much fun. This year should be the most tired they are after over 400 games in four years, and yet I, I think they're more lively than they were even last year. I camp. think that's true. I mean, I, I, I actually I know that's true from everything I've seen in the, in the practices and all that. I mean, it's just a different feel. Um, and like you said, I mean, I, I, that was a nice move. But but it's um, China, China took a lot out of us, um, and we had a sense going into camp a little bit like we have to show up. It's more of an obligatory thing. This seems like a lot more joy, like Steve talked about, coming into camp and trying to enjoy it, having fun with it. And um, that's what you're seeing. I think that's what you're alluding to. Well, the other thing, too, Jim, this is very odd, but sweeping in the finals works out great because you're about 10 days shorter, yeah. you know, that you added on to your offseason by coming up with a sweep. As Damian Jones spikes that down. Let's see if this group right here can play some defense because Phoenix has been on a real tear in this first part of the third quarter. The Phoenix is, they're, they're, this, they're moving the ball. Yeah. They're doing a good job offensively. Obviously, they're making shots, but. They're going to win more than 21 yeah. games this year. No, no, well, they, they look like they're, they're doing something there, and they got, they've got a direction on offense, which is, and, and they got some more, they got some vets. You know, adding Ryan Anderson, I think, and obviously adding Trevor Reza. Sprinkling in veterans with some of the youth. Yes. Always, and even Tyson Chandler out there, I always think that's a good idea. Are you counting roster spots and looking at guaranteeing contracts and see 13 and say, hey, if we want a 14th guy, we could do that, or you could do a non-guaranteed deal? How, how does that sort out heading into the final week? 
Well, that's what we're doing. We're just talking to our group about that, I'm talking to Steve. Uh, we talked about that quite a bit. Just talked about it at halftime. How to kind of evaluate these guys. We've got Daniel House coming in our direction here, and then McKinney, we have wing players. Um, we've got other guys that D Derrickson, who did some nice things. You saw, you guys probably watched our first game here. So we're trying to figure that out. We'll keep an eye on what we have going internally. We'll look externally uh, to see if we can keep that 14th guy, and, and uh, hopefully it's somebody that can help us. There's Looney again. Rolling and Curry finding him. Um, he's not in the game, but we wanted to mention because I watched your face when he made the shot. You know, Jonas Gorevko striped a three in that first half. Mm -hmm. And last four years, he's been 40% from distance. Warriors with Omri Caspi had the ankle injury last year, and Quinn Cook took that spot. But Jonas, if he could hit the three and be another reserve big, that'd be a nice find. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, shooting, spacing, he's a guy that can play with those those starters that we have as well and just the threat of shooting now is it's so important in the, in the league and you can come up the challenge with our team is I would say it's not a bad thing uh, is that when you play a lot of times in our second unit we've got Kevin out there or Clay and some of our players on the bench and rightly so you could say in Jim you, you know you you defer sometimes you over defer yes to you know you say I've got a shot here but I can kick it to Clay Thompson um, so you got to stay aggressive, and that's what we hope Jonas will continue to do, and, and anybody else coming off the bench. Can you hang for one more segment? Jeff, you want me to? I mean, you screwed up so badly. I know in the that beginning, was. So, <laughs> Bob Myers, apologetic, will uh, make up for it in the final league. Now, Bob Myers sitting alongside. You know, underreported last year was the amount of injuries to key players. When you look at Steph and Andre, Kevin, Draymond, and Clay, the four All Stars only played 41 games together, and. I think just the law of averages, you can have a lot more availability from your big guns this year. I hope so. I mean, <laughs> that 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 was not a good statistic right there. Uh, but yeah, you know, look, that was some of that was just very random. But uh, all those guys feel good right now heading into camp. I think Draymond's feeling okay. I think hopefully he'll play on Wednesday. So yeah, we hope to avoid that kind of uh, graphic again. And that's when you tell people, oh, yeah, the four All-Stars played 41 of the 82 games. They almost can't believe it. Yeah, no, I mean, really. And, but look, they played when it mattered, and that's what that's the key. But that's what made for a tough regular season. I mean, it was, it was up and down for a lot of the time. Grant wanted Damian Jones to cut, but a better step in steal. Uh, Reed able to put it up and in. That was a nice play. Yeah, I mean, look, the Suns came to play tonight, and they're, they're, they're doing a good job on both sides of the ball. Um, and you know, look, they're, look they got that, I think their offense is a, is a new, new type of thing they got going on, and it's it's working. They're shooting the ball well too. I don't know what they're shooting from three, but they went. They start out seven of ten, and then yeah. in the second quarter cooled down to a twelve. But <laughs> twelve of twenty six. Is this uh, a right? uh, You know, the two Houston guys, Ariza and uh, Anderson, had nineteen points in the first quarter. Yeah. You know, Ryan Anderson's an interesting player, Bob, because I don't think his ability has changed. Mm -hmm. He's always been able to make threes. He's always a sneaky, good offensive rebounder. But his contract was so big that there were reluctant teams to move him. And then Houston made a couple different decisions. I think Phoenix, because they had the financial capacity to take him, they got a pretty quality player. Yeah. No, he's he's a veteran. Uh, can shoot the ball. I mean, like we said, shooting's a premium in this league right now. And uh, smart. So yeah. I mean, look, they're. Uh, you know, you're always looking to, like I said, it's hard to build. We've been fortunate here, but it's tough to build rosters. And it's tough to get it right all the time. And, um, you know, you want to you draft as best you can. You want to trade best you can, sign guys. That's really what you're doing. That's what we try to do in the front office. Uh, you and Steve kind of set the tone for this year about, yeah, how about just enjoying this year for this year? Yeah. You know, everyone, went, well, two years from now, and your cap room and the luxury tax, and all, you kind of say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Every year is its own separate entity. How about enjoying this incredible talent of players, the final year at Oracle, the chance to try to three-peat? How about enjoying what we got going right now? <laughs> yeah, well, look, I mean, I'm guilty of myself. You, you have to try and, you know, in, our, in my job, I say you have to keep one foot in the present and one foot in the future. But I probably not, don't do a good job of that. I've almost got, got two feet in the future. But when we wanted this last year in Cleveland, I kind of made a promise to myself that you just don't know. I mean, we're in the midst of something unique. Um, and we're going to blink. And it'll be gone. So whether it's myself giving my, my own advice or heeding my own advice or anybody else, yeah, I mean, let's 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 have fun with it. We, You know, it's a basketball game, and it's a pretty darn good team. And sure. Yeah, they're good guys too. So all of it's positive. Just, just take it in. And and with that said, you know, enjoy the the moment, enjoy the games, 
but you can't just, you know, waltz through the season. You've got an 82-game schedule. And so here's, here's my theory on this, Bob. Every once in a while, you know, they're going to lose a game and stuff. And I think just the natural thought and, and aspect of losing is going to inspire them. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? It'll, it'll wake them. It wakes themselves up. It's that they don't want to lose. And so they they might get sloppy, might get lazy here and there, whatever. Uh, you know, they didn't win nearly as many games last year, and yet, you know, they, they came through. So when the loss comes, it could be a good thing for them. You know so what I mean? Yeah. What, what gets overlooked, you guys know our players and our coach very well. What gets overlooked sometimes about this group of guys is, is their level of competitiveness. I mean, people look at Steph Curry and think, you know, he's a, yeah. he's, he's a baby face. This, this. He is one of the most competitive people. Clay Thompson, you wouldn't know it. The one you do know is Draymond. I mean, you can tell he's yes. he's a competitor. But, but the other guys are just as competitive as, as, as Draymond. And Kevin's a competitive guy and all these guys. So that's, I think, what will push us and drive us to yeah. keep, keep going. The and natural keep, consequences yeah, absolutely. of that. Yeah, yep. the, the other thing, just reality, in the last 23 NBA seasons, only two champions didn't have a top four regular season record. Yeah, I and mean, then we talked about this the other day. Uh, only two. Yeah. In the regular season, this notion that doesn't matter. I mean, that's, that's, that it, all the games matter. I mean, you're, either you're building habits, you're, sit, you're, you're working on your seeding. I mean, all those areas are, are to be worked on. So, um, got to keep moving in that direction. What do you think of Jacob Evans, your number one pick? He's, you know, he's a smart player. He does a lot of different things. I think he's learning this NBA game now. Um, he's a guy that, my, the best thing I've heard about him is he's a very hard worker and he wants to be good. And I think that can carry you a long way in this league or obviously anything in life. But he, um, he's working every day. I mean, he's going to have to work on his shot, get more consistent. He's going to have to be a three and D guy. And I think the best thing he does now is probably defend, um, which is good. But he's going to have to work on different things. And our offense, like I said, it's so, it's not a rote offense. It's a lot of reacting to certain things, and it'll take a while for him to pick it up. But we have we have uh, expectations for him. We'll see when he gets there. That's got to be a bounce pass. Yeah, T.J. Warren's had a couple nice steals. He tried to finish, and now the Warriors have numbers on the counterattack. And Quinn Cook calls his own number. And how about Jordan, Jordan Bell hustling the 94 feet? Yeah, the, the, the energy plays have been lacking here tonight. I mean, Phoenix has made a lot of them, so it'll be interesting to see this this lineup and, and uh, what they can do and try to get back in this game. I don't know how much the other big guns are going to play in the fourth quarter, so we'll should be fun to watch some of these young guys here. How about the end of the week? I, I would imagine people might tune into a a Warrior Laker preseason game. No. There's going to be a couple of those coming up. Yeah, I mean, what Wednesday and then obviously Friday, and, yeah. and, and Steve's got to figure out. We're going to figure out who's going to play, who isn't. I know we got a lot of guys resting tonight but we still want to find our rhythm because the season what eight days away I think that center position is going to be uh, made go for a while just game by game depending on matchups and who you're playing yeah I think it will hey look we want to we want to um, you know, help see and I think he wants to have a sense of who's going to come off the bench how he's going to play guys it's okay to do the matchup thing but you also want to know as a player kind of when you're coming sure. and going. Yeah. You know. yep. Now, we won't get a chance to talk to you on TV until the regular season, but as a Monta Vista High kid, what's it like when that banner gets unveiled as the GM and realize, hey, man, that's the third one. <laughs> that it's here. That those live in the rafters forever. I mean, just how cool is that moment when that thing is unveiled? You know, when I go with you, UCLA, you know, we, we won, we're fortunate enough to win it in 1995. And I went back there, and you don't really, you know, it, it's those things are better appreciated, I think, in hindsight. You know, that tomorrow or whatever, in eight days, we're going to have it come down. And, but I bet I'll come here in 20 years or not, you know, wherever, Jason, I'll look up and say, man, that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun. Uh, you know what I think is the greatest ever? Uh, I'll credit Raymond Ritter, our VP of PR, but also Joe Lincoln for having the uh, fortitude to do it. You own a team and you stand up there and say, that's a lonely banner. Yeah. You know, we want another one. We want, I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. I was sitting next to Jim when Joe did that. Yeah. I'm like, we want the banners lonely. How about making the playoffs? <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, I, I, I heard him say that too. I wasn't working for the team and I thought, man, what do you, yeah, like, like you just said, the playoffs would be a nice start, but I mean, you know, you need people like that um, to say it. You got to speak your goals. Um, and for me, him, you know, working underneath him, it's it's that drive, it's that push that, that I think really catapults the whole organization. And uh, 
you know, it's, it's one thing to say it, but he, he delivered on it times three. So I mean, hats off to him. Yeah, well, I think that the thing I always point out, the 73 and 9 season, the Warriors won 88 and 18, okay? Mm. That's the best record of any of the years. Yeah. But Joe says, but we didn't win it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 88 well, and 18. Yeah, yeah. But, but we didn't win it. Yeah. You know, look, the, the, the fact that, that that record was bookended by championships, whether it was or wasn't, I, I, that record means something to me. It doesn't have to. Everybody can decide who's listening or watching what it means to them. But 73 wins in a regular season is <laughs> remarkable. It's unbelievable. Uh, I, I'll never forget that year in terms of starting 24 0, the adversity without yeah. Steve. Yeah. I mean, just, it's. That, that's still 88 and 18. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you know, Kyrie Irving with a minute left in game seven. There's nothing wrong with that season. No, no. I mean, it's. No. It, 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 if there is, then we got to do something, something else. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty darn, darn good. Jordan so. Bell yeah. laying it up and in. Nice move. Well, you know what I always ask people, though? And you guys both chime in on this. You know, the Seattle Seahawks won the division once and they were seven and nine. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Well, what if they went on to win the Super Bowl? Yeah. Were they some great team that year? <laughs> they were seven and nine. <laughs> but seventy-three and nine isn't any good. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. You know, and I think we're look, we're result oriented, and that's fine. We work in that type of profession, but uh, there's still a big part of the the, 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 the season that's, that's every day, right? Yeah. Every practice. Every day. So that's what makes it fun. This is nice with Quinn Cook and Jacob Evans. Jarebko and Bell out with McKinney, so Steve looking at different combos. Clock at nine. Quinn Cook. Uh, I think that was a nice signing, Bob. <laughs> you know, look, I, I, it's interesting. He's he was great. You guys watched him last year. He's also got a great. He's a great guy. Great oh, character sure. guy. Yes. Very high class. The veterans respect him and. Uh, yeah, look, he's excited. Well, he got an eight-second call. He's, he's, he's a competitor. You know? He just had a turnover yeah, because of defense. He just is. There's nobody on the team that doesn't like him, really. Um, it, everybody in the organization, for that matter. He's a winner, and uh, you, you respect a guy like that. Great energy, great attitude, and, and obviously earned his contract. He really yeah. did. He's not. He doesn't get too anxious with the ball when a screen's coming. He waits right. for that screen to get set. Yep. Plays yeah. with a good pace. The, the only problem is you identified him and signed him. And brought it, but it was your assistant GM Kevin Durant that takes all the credit. <laughs> well, him and Ke Kevin did know him longer than we did. Kevin was pushing for him, to be honest. I mean, they've known each other a long time. And it's an interesting relationship because they both, um, Kevin will get advice from Quinn, Quinn will get advice from Kevin, and it's what any good friendship should be. All right, so as we let you go, you need to know something that happened with DeMarcus Cousins joining oh, us. No. He said he's going to have less technicals than Draymond. Well, he's going to play a lot less games, though, right? <laughs> what are we talking about? No. I know, but you might want to tell, hey, Draymond, that make, Draymond, make, tell Draymond that and make it a competition. That'd be good, right? Do you think they'd care? No. <laughs> Actually, if it's competitive, maybe they would. I don't want anybody getting teased, so we'll see. Of course, Jim then told him when he punted it into the second deck and got a second and five. <laughs> Marcus said, I've never done that. I'm not going to do that. Oh, man. I told him it was well worth it. <laughs> Jacob. From the baseline. That was a confident stroke there. Now, like I said, I mean, he's just, just kind of hoping he just keeps getting better. So a little bit of defense to end the third. Whole quarter with you guys. There you go. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, if that GM Warriors. thing doesn't work out, hanging out with Come me, Jim. Want to thank the Warriors GM, Bob Myers, for joining us. Get ready for the fourth quarter and the season about eight days away. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Who yes. can uh, break, yes. break clipboards and. I always, Steve mentions it, and his wife Margo says it a lot, but that quote, yeah, Margo knows it. Be, beware the fury of a patient man. Uh, yes. <laughs> Andre Eaton had that rebound. And very clearly, not only the Suns played well, as Troy Daniels stripes that three, but they have come to this game with a purpose, and, and I think their entire staff has used it as a measuring stick. Hey, you're playing the world champions. You know, you're a 21-win team. You've got a reason, Ryan Anderson, but and they, they are playing 100 miles an hour. And they had a 40-point first quarter and a 38-point third quarter. Uh, T.J. Warren probably won't appreciate this, but I've always thought he would have been a phenomenal six-man gym because he can score off the bench. Sure. And, you know, he's had a couple steals tonight. 
And I, I think if he's one of your rotation bench guys, he's a great super sub offensively. And that might be a role for him now. George Bell has worked on that jumper. And a lot for McKinney in for the layup. McKinney and Daniel House, Marcus Derrickson, all kind of fighting for likely one spot. Perhaps. Well, he rushed the shot. While he was in college, it's what, 19.9? The uh, length of that, he shot extremely well, 34%. That's fine. So, yeah, that's fine. That was inside that range. He just somehow didn't release it right. That's a good looking jump shot. I like the mechanics there. So Alfonso McKinney with another bucket. Let's see how this unit plays here. Tyler Ulysses is getting set to check in. And that's an and one opportunity. So DeAnthony Melton, he was. He was part of the Ryan Anderson trade. He was a second round pick by the Rockets. And missing the free throw there. Jarevko and Jordan Bell with Ulis. That one's off the Warriors. Along with Quinn Cook and Alfonso McKinney. Mike Brown coaching with Steve having been ejected. There, Aiden had it stripped. Good hands by Quinn Cook. And brought all the defense to him. Lewis. That would have been quite the finish. Size disparity with Aiden. So need to string together a couple stops here. Try to get fully back into this. Jarevko. He drops in another three. Yeah, he, was, he, he sets people up. He set up Queen Cook a moment ago. Now he set up Jarevko. A lot of deeper reserves. Let's see if they have a comeback in them. Coming in ring ceremony. Oh, yeah. Jim. God, are they they're just incredible. Like Bob said, you know, you go down to Pauly and his UCLA championship is there. Yeah, those, banner, those banners hang forever. Your father going to come up tonight? Absolutely. That's why I bring, bring my mom and dad. And okay. my son. That loud read nicely and knocked away from Aiton. Yeah, I like McKinney doing that. Right in the mix of it. He saw it coming. We, we have another offensive foul. Six offensive fouls on the Warriors tonight. And it's patience on screens and a little too early rolling or a little too active moving without the ball, but it's a little unusual. Get to the line. Yeah, I can't say it's uh, inexperienced, guys, because Steph Curry has three of those <laughs> offensive fouls. Right. People are pretty clever. You know, you, you go to set a screen, and then the uh, defensive player may grab your arm, lock it up, and the official thinks you're the one doing it. Yeah. So they they don't see it. All the tricks of the trade. Yep. I got it here. Tell you what, I'm happy for Suns fans, though. I think they're going to enjoy DeAndre Ayton. I keep thinking Devin Booker and how he's going to acclimate himself. He's going to come back. He said, told me before the game that he's going to start the season. He's going to be ready for the opening night. He had a broken right hand. He was shooting before the game. Yeah, and moving around. 25 points a game. And he can do it all. I mean, he, he, offensively, 
he can do everything. Devin Booker signed a contract extension this summer. Yes. He's going to go from 3.3 .3 million to 27 million a year. Five years, 158, right? But didn't he, his game in Boston, didn't he have 71 points? Yes. In the garden? <laughs> yes. No, he's a scoring machine. But I'll ask you, I mean, is, he's an off guard though, right? I mean, yes, he's, he's an off guard. Okay. He's not a point guard. And that's, that's what they're still missing in Phoenix. So they've got some pieces. And Aiton traveled there. DeMarcus Cousins said with young bigs, first thing he looks at is the footwork. And so Aiton there was a little sloppy and called for the shuffle. Enjoyed our conversation with DeMarcus Cousins. It's been a chance to talk to him several times now. And oh, he's glib. No, no question about it. I think the thing, if you follow sports extensively, think of Randy Moss when he got to New England. Think of Rasheed Wallace when he got to the championship Pistons. This is a huge opportunity for DeMarcus. And, and he mentioned right off the bat, Jim, the Warrior organization. Yes. That not just the teammates, but everything that Joe Lake and Bob Myers is. Alfonso McKinney catching the air ball and dunking. Air balls go to the offense. Chapter six, Booker Barnett. But that DeMarcus already, from the employee meeting to the medical staff to the way he's been treated by the front office, he, he just is enjoying all of it. This is impressive by Aiton here. And look who is always sitting next to DeMarcus. Look who he's always talking to. He is. He's paid, spending time with, with Damien Jones. Josh Jackson, nice pass. But Aiden, he can cover a lot of ground there. And that was a correct call. Block was, it was a block call. Gets a three-point play. And he finished the skill with the little yes. underhand yeah. flip. He, he, he did not panic when he saw that one defender. He kept right with his move, but he got to that spot quickly. I like got good it. hands. I, I like big men with good hands. You know that. Well, that's one thing you always told me, you know, you can't teach. Marcus Derrickson for three. You know, Chris Weber could catch anything. Yes. And then quickness, the other thing you can't teach. Antoine Jameson was super quick. Oh, that's a tough call. That's good defense. You yeah, basically get Harrison just kind of fall down there, unfortunately. Well, Derrickson was in good position. He's coming over. He just yeah. fell. He just fell down. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's this also. I mean, you have a rookie official in Sterling that, that he will be coached as well. His his angle from the slot there. He had no vision of that play. He no, should not have made a call. At all. He was directly behind it and, and, and about 40 feet away. Right. And that's the first thing they tell officials is you know never guess. And yeah, don't assume. Don't assume. <laughs> That's what the preseason's for everybody. So 6.51 left. It's an 11 point game. And the Warriors are trying to turn it up defensively a little bit. That special commemorative Durant Sharks bobblehead. I like that. I'll tell you what, he's uh, a chameleon. He's wearing different uniforms. Up in Seattle, yeah. he's wearing the Sonics uniform. Now he's got a Shark uniform. He's diversifying. Well, we finally had Dragon Bender check into the game. He is the only son to have played in every game last year. 82 games. Yes, he is. So Alex Lynn, who was one of their top five picks, he's now with the Atlanta Hawks. I'm trying to figure out who Bender is in terms of who's more of a long-range shooter. I did my homework, too. I looked that up, and it's kind of strange. Kendrick Dunn getting an opportunity here, along with Marcus Derrickson, Jonas Jarebko, Tyler Eulis. Booker only played 54 games last year, by the way. Now, is DeAndre Ayton the center? They played him at center all night long, but there's, we know Bender is a center. And sometimes I might, you might see them this year together. They, might, they won't be as fast, and they, they won't get into the open court as much, but Bender will be the center, and in some uh, instances, Aiton will be a power forward. Now, now, Bender was the fourth pick in 2016. He shot 37% on threes last year. So he can be more of an inside-outside guy, but ha has the size that we're talking about. It. He's also 7-1, just like Aiton. Sean Holmes making the free throw. But so you mentioned the obvious Phoenix will be better this year, but that's the deal with the West, and that's why 
multiple injuries in San Antonio put the Spurs yeah. in a tough spot because now that LeBron's in LA and you've got Denver, those two teams were not in the playoffs last year. Utah is going to be oh, Utah's good, legit. Harrison missing three. You know Houston's going to be good. You know the Warriors are going to be good. Oklahoma City keeping Paul George and re signing him. And you got Russell Westbrook and Paul George and Stevie Adams. And that gives you a squad. Yes, it does. I really want to see how the Jimmy Butler situation works out in Minnesota because. That's Many a strange if, scenario. Yeah, if they trade him, it all depends on what they get in the trade. But well, they're sure not anxious to give him away. That's all. You can no. tell that by now. Erickson oh, oh, oh. came over, but Eulis had committed the foul early. That's when you have to know. If, if, if a big man can say, I got him, then you know you have help. And then you don't reach in and you don't foul, and you just hope that he covers for you. You know, the one thing Damian Jones did earlier, Jim, when he got called up in the very brief G League things, we saw him biting on pump fakes and leaving yeah. his feet and all that. Too anxious. I, I think that has what? slowed down for him a little bit. You know, I don't know if it's just starting these preseason games or just another year of maturity, but you know, he had the one weak side block. You don't see him leaving his feet as often. You can play in that G League all you want, but there's no substitute for playing up here and getting some experience. Right. He's the type of kid that they could play like they used to. 15, 18 exhibition games. It, it bring them along a lot, lot quicker. And when you say that, it's because you did that with the Celtics. Yeah. Uh, how many, how many did Red Arbach have you guys barnstorming? I do know this. We played eight intra squad games, which were greens against whites, with and, and a high school gymnasium, different high schools, and it was a, no one had guaranteed contracts, so it's it's a full 48 minute game, and eight of those, and then we had 15 exhibition games. <laughs> Oh we, but we had 12 games in 12 straight nights in 10 different states traveling with the opposition on the bus with us. Okay, wait a minute. 12, yes. 12 games? Yes. In 12 nights in 10 different states? Yes. By bus? Yes. You have to realize they won eight straight championships, so they were treated well. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 12 nights in a row, 10 different states. We flew a couple of times, but mostly traveling with Philadelphia and Big World. Erickson missing that three that St. Louis Hawks. That's will, where they were originally. I will be asking you about the 60s era Celtics more often this year because yeah. if the Warriors were to make five straight finals, the last team to do that in NBA history was the Russell Celtics. So yeah, the Lakers going back, didn't you go back it. nearly 16 oh. years. Yep. Well, a little easier for them. There were eight teams they were playing against. When I came in, they moved it to 10. Easier in terms of number of teams, but not easier in terms of who played on some of the best teams. Oh, no. <laughs> but they had a pretty dominant team, and they had Bill Russell. But that's really, you know, Jordan went to baseball, but the Chicago Bulls didn't go to the finals five years in a row. Magic's Lakers never went to the finals five years in a row. Bird Celtics never went to the nope. finals. Duncan Spurs. And just five straight years for the Warriors if they were to do it is something else. Championship replica ring night. It's when the Warriors play these very same Phoenix Suns October 22nd at 7.30. All fans in attendance get their very own championship replica ring courtesy of Bay Area BMW. The Warrior tickets at warriors.com. I think they'll be a little more prepared to meet this team. I thought Bob Myers made a really nice comment that, and Terry Cummings way back in the day told us that, Jim, young people don't lead young people. Yes. You know, this idea of let's be terrible and get all lottery picks. And you have to sprinkle the old with the new, the experience yes. with the younger players and learn how to be a professional. And, you know, that's the nice mix now for the Warriors is, you know, who's Jacob Evans learned from? Andre Godala. Who's Damian Jones talking to? Kevin Durant, DeMarcus Cousins. You know, who's Quinn Cook learning from? Steph Curry. You know, that you need that on your team. What? Damian is and alongside DeMarcus in many, many situations in this training camp. And Iguodala is now the uh, senior member at age 34. He is. 
And yet Andre had a really good offseason physically. Oh, yeah. Well, he had some uh, little procedure on that knee. And he did. Had to miss memory six games in the playoffs because of that. I remember because it was the scariest part of the Warriors season. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are in shape, in tune, and getting ready for the challenge ahead. And you made a nice point, Jim, that you know, the Warriors get upended by a team, it, it almost fuels them into a, like, hey, wait, we lost the game, let's go take it out that's, on somebody. That's what I was going to say. Uh, you know, people will write about it, they'll talk about it on the radio shows, but it, it'll be good for them. Yes. I would expect if they continue the way they've been playing the last four years, it would be good for them to lose once in a while. Uh, to, to get the little wake-up call, it would be a natural consequence, and they'll respond because of their competitiveness. And we know when we travel that every city, particularly the East, where the Warriors only go one time, that is the opponent. You get their absolute yep. best. Yes. You're going to Orlando one time. You're going to Atlanta one time. I mean, Charlotte one time. And that's where this young man, who's now 30, Stephen Curry, 10th year in the league, he understands that. I, you, he plays, remember that trip? Was it, uh, was it two years ago? He went Orlando, Atlanta, Atlanta Miami. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and he goes and he's going for 35 and 45 and 42 and 51. 30, 51. Yeah. In Orlando, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. He, he understands that, and so he knows he only has the one appearance there, and he gets ready for him. That's one of my favorite things about Michael Jordan, when they always asked, they, they had a game in the Vancouver Grizzlies at the time, where Jordan scored 22 straight points and led the Bulls back. And they said, why do you care about a Tuesday night in March in Vancouver? He said, because that might be the only time that person ever gets to see me in person, uh -huh. and I want him to know that it was all real. <laughs> <laughs> that the legend of Jordan is that it was all real, and that's there's something to be said for for guys like Michael for that, and for Steph to yes. understand what you mean to the league and your performances yeah. for the fans. And you have pride in that reputation to so make it legitimate. That goes to what Bob was saying in terms of the competitiveness. Well, these, these guys, you okay? You know, you, you want to give the Warriors your best shot? Well, you may wake them up, and the Warriors will be coming after you too. That's why those third quarters yep. last year, they have some goofy things happen in the first half, and the Warriors would land on teams like a, a house fell on their head. The third quarters were just remarkable. Kenny's got double digits. He does. Warriors outsiders are back. Drew Schiller, Grant Liffman break it down right after the game. They'll be doing that all season. Very entertaining and interesting info from the guys. Yeah, Andre Iguodala asked about the Warriors' third quarter. He said, it's like a boxing match. Feel the team out for a couple rounds, and in the third quarter, we try to put them away. John Holmes. That must be a point of emphasis this year. I think you're on top of it, Perch. Although you point out, Jim, and most people Jeez. don't explain it as well as you do. A lot of times it's because the guard doesn't let the guy set the screen. It's just a little too anxious. You have to wait. And you set him up. Most people, we always learn, when you see that screen coming, go the opposite way and then come back into the screen. Set your man up. Give him a little help so he doesn't have to move on that when he sets that screen. Jacob Evans with the drive and will reach in foul. Well, this is where these young guys, they see the score. Uh, they know, you know, they're not all going to be around here, so they go a little more one-on-one -on -one right now. That, so the offense got a little stagnant. might have heard Mr. Brown say, uh, move it. So the Warriors opening schedule, OKC will be exclusive nationally. Then we have every game up until Christmas. So we've got you covered for a large preponderance. And we're going to know right away, Jim, at Utah and Denver, that is a spicy little two-gamer to begin things. This Phoenix team that John Wall 
Bradley Beal. Nice to go to Denver, though, and have a day off before, and you're also an hour closer. Yeah. So, uh, won't be quite so intimidating. I think Nuggets should have a heck of a season. And I think Nicole Jokic is becoming a star. He, he's a special player. Yes, he's good. He's got two good guards back there, too. Yes, you do. Jamal Murray and Gary Harris, they're, yes. they're really they're legit. Only going to get better. Also, too, they, they they missed Paul Millsap at, at various times last year. You know, that yes. would have been a consistent kind of 15, 17 a game that, that would have helped them. You know who got better, though, it helped is Will Barton. It did. Well, Will Barton is on the All Warrior opponent team. <laughs> As the tempo goes up, Will Barton is scoring 25, it seems, every time the, the Warriors play him wherever he is, whether it's Memphis or Portland or Denver. In the final 48 seconds. Warriors got down 18 at one point. A little bit of a comeback, but not enough. So, Erickson down in that three in that. It would be notable that Steve Kerr was ejected in the game. And Steph Curry had 23 points in 24 minutes. Durant, Looney, Damian Jones, Quinn Cook, and McKinney were all double figures. Good look at the number one pick, DeAndre Ayton, who had 18 points and seven boards. With 14 made threes by the Suns. He shot it very well tonight. Ayton scores, he'll score a lot of points, and you don't have to really find shots for him. He'll find he'll find himself getting shots. So he'll finish tonight seven of eleven. That's pretty efficient. Not bad. Well, well, then you just finally yeah. went the right way. My basket is this way. Your <laughs> basket is that way. Fundamentals. Bender will launch the three. So Wednesday in Vegas versus the Lakers. And then Friday in San Jose versus the Lakers. That'll end the preseason. And then ring night and the season opener, October 16th. Right here at Oracle, in the final year after 47 years at Oracle. OKC. 117-109, the final. Jimmy, it was a pleasure. Look forward to doing it for real. Yes, uh, eight days, baby. 117-109, the final. I want to thank DeMarcus Cousins and Bob Myers for spending time on the broadcast. For Jim Barnett, this is Bob Fitzgerald saying so long from Oracle. Couple more preseason games against L.A. And then the Warriors try to defend the championship to make it.